So in the Buddhist tradition, there's a story about a man who had four wives. And his fourth wife, he loved her so much. And he would buy her beautiful clothes and feed her wonderful meals. Anything she desired, he would give to her. And his third wife, he really, he treasured her. He loved her too. But whatever she said, he did. He built his life around what she said. And his second wife, whenever there was a problem or something he was just, you know, he couldn't figure out on his own, he would talk to her about it. So he loved her too. She was his very close confidant. But his first wife, he didn't pay much attention to her. She was very soft-spoken and she, um, she was very modest and she was actually extremely skinny, kind of like almost malnourished. And she didn't get a lot of attention. So one day he fell ill and he was going to die. And he was very afraid, so he called all of his wives to him. He didn't want to be alone. And he said to his fourth wife, I love you, I love you the most. Please come with me. I'm dying, please come with me. And she said no, and turned around and walked away. She was gone, and his heart was just broken. So he looked at his third wife and said, I, I, I've built my life around you, everything you've said, please come with me, come with me in death, I'm afraid, please come with me. And she said, as soon as you die, I'm going to someone else. And again, he was crushed by this news. You know, he thought she was it. She was everything. And so then he turned to his, his second wife and, and said, please, will you come with me? Will you, my closest confidant, will you please come with me? And she said, I'm sorry, I can only go as far as the cemetery with you. And then I have to leave you. I can't go with you. Just then he heard a voice behind him, a very quiet, soft voice, the voice of his first wife saying, I'll go with you. I am absolutely devoted to you. Everything I've done has been for you. I'll go with you. And he was so grateful to her. He thought, why, why haven't I paid attention to you all these years, my whole life? I really never thought much about you. And here you are, absolutely devoted to me, coming with me, the only one going to come with me as I leave this planet. So the fourth wife, she represents our physical body. Right? We pay a lot of attention to that physical body. Right? Our, lives, our lives are very much involved with the physical body, giving it what it wants. Right? And the third wife represents material wealth and status. Right? The moment we go, that's gone. None of it matters. And yet, again, so much focus we tend to put toward that part of our lives. And the, the next wife, the second wife, that's our family and our friends, right? They're there for us, but they can only go so far with us. And the first wife is the soul body, the only thing that we take with us, the most important relationship we'll ever have in our lives. And yet often it gets the least amount of attention. So we're going to, it's not that the physical body is not important. We're going to, in this practice of yoga, use that physical form right, to connect to that soul body. That's what yoga is really for. You might start your yoga program thinking that you're going to help your physical health and be more fit, and, and all those things are true, but if you stay with it, long enough, you start to realize that you're doing it for much, much bigger reasons, right? To connect to that inner voice, that soul. So we're going to do this Kriya uh, for connecting to our own divinity. 
because if we don't, the physical body suffers. In, um, in the, the book that this Kriya comes from, Siri Atma Singh, he wrote this book, he's a doctor, and he said something uh, so profound, I'd like to share it with you. He said, the distance between who you are supposed to be and who you've become is the amount of disease, suffering, and depression you manifest in your life to compel you to close this gap. Right? So the space between what we're doing, what we're thinking, what we're focusing on, and our soul's journey, that space between. Right? That's what the messages from the body are all about when we get sick. So yesterday I was with someone and she was about to go in, she's about to go in for surgery, but I think that's not going to happen now. She had been in her life for many years overweight and over the last few years um, she lost that weight and was a very healthy size, um, very fit person. And then all of the sudden she started having numbness in her hands, in her arms. She had a sharp pain in her upper back. So she went to the doctor and he said, oh, you have all these discs, they're pressing on nerves, and so now you have this numbness. But as I, I talked to her, the numbness began to go away because I helped her see the, the, the path, the trajectory that her body was on. So when, when the body is very overweight, it's, it's a kind of an insulation, right? It's a layer of protection, so we don't feel so much. It tends to happen. It's one way. There's a million ways that we numb ourselves. So we, we, we soften the blow, if you will, so we don't feel things, painful things, so deeply. It's so painful, that gap between what we're doing sometimes and what our soul's desire is. It's so painful that so misalignment, that we have to, we think we have to numb ourselves. So in the beginning of her life, she was trained to numb herself with this layer of insulation. And then when that layer of insulation was gone, she was doing something healthy, good for herself, it's true, right? But the mind needed to find another way, right? To give her a message, if you will, but also it needed to continue this feeling of numbness. So she couldn't do physically what she wanted to do because of this numbness. So she's preparing to have surgery and coming to me to prepare for the surgery. She wanted to continue a practice, but she was afraid. She was afraid of her body, wanted to know what she could do. So as we talked about this idea of her numbing herself to things that were painful in her life, suddenly the numbness started to fall away. Right? So the body is just giving her this message. Right? So the body is not what the life is all about, but the body is very important in giving us messages from our soul. If we're listening, we'll get them, and then we can bring everything back into alignment again, close that gap. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do this beautiful Kriya for becoming aligned with the soul and in a meditation for creating self-love because each time we veer away from the soul we deny who we are so this is the soul what we're talking about is the essence of ourselves each soul is a unique creation of the universe with a very specific path in mind and each time we veer away from that path it's a betrayal of our soul and so over time we stop trusting ourselves we stop loving ourselves, right? Because we've betrayed ourselves so many times. If you've been betrayed enough, you, you kind of hold back from loving that person, right? So the same thing happens to us. So the idea is to come back in alignment with the soul and reestablish that loving relationship between the body and the mind and the soul. So you're all in? That's what we're doing. All right, rub your hands together, please.